Hello, thanks for watching. My name is Ryan. Tonight we're taking a look at the movie trailer for James Bond 007 No Time to Die starring Daniel Craig. I know there's been a lot of speculation out there that James Bond is getting replaced by a woman and will be Jane Bond in future movies. We'll talk about that after the trailer. Here's the official trailer for James Bond 007 No Time to Die. Why would I betray you? We all have our secrets. We just didn't get to yours yet. The world is arming faster than we can respond. Where's 007? I need a favor, brother. You're the only one I trust for this. The world's moved on, Commander Bond. You were double O. Two years. So stay in your lane. You get in my way. I will put a bullet in your knee. The one that works. I thought you two would get along. Name? Bond. James Bond. So you're not dead. Hello, Q. I've missed you. It's the most valuable asset this country has. If you feel yourself losing control, I'm not going to lose. Control. James, you gave up everything for her. When her secret finds its way out, it'll be the death of you. What is it? I don't know what this is. James Bond. Licensed to kill. History of violence. I could be speaking to my own reflection. Only your skills die with your body. Mine will survive long after I'm gone. History isn't kind to men who play God. Wow, that looks action-packed and majestic. Some of those scenes in the trailer looks like they took the crew about a week to light, much less shoot it. The cinematography looks breathtaking. It has an all-star cast. It looks like we're gonna get everything we expect in a James Bond movie. Exotic locations, beautiful women, cars with machine guns as headlights. I mean, how cool was that scene? Cool new spy tech, you know, Bond stuff. I've seen every Bond movie, including the two unofficial non-Eon ones. I just recently went back and watched the previous four Daniel Craig Bond films, and I think I finally come to the conclusion that he's my favorite Bond. It's very close between Craig and uh, Sean Connery. They have different styles, as we see in the trailer. Daniel Craig is a little more action hero, more gritty and shoot em up style. Connery's a little more suave and debonair smooth and always in control. In this movie, Daniel Craig is back as Bond. This will be his last go in the franchise. And I know we've heard it before. Evidently, they gave him many, many reasons to come back one last time. And I think most Bond fans, myself included, are happy that he did. He looks a little older. He looks more reluctant, I guess, but he still looks great. I mean, I hope I look half that good at his age. So the story is Bond has retired and trying to live a quiet life in Jamaica. His old friend Felix Leader shows up asking for help to rescue a kidnapped scientist. Doesn't that always happen? As soon as you get comfortable and you're ready to eat your hot dinner, the phone rings or you get a text message. I mean, it's, it's tragic. And of course, it turns out to be more treacherous than expected, leading Bond onto the trail of a mysterious villain armed with a dangerous new technology. 
Oscar winner Rami Malik plays the character Safin, the villain with the disfigured face behind the mask, looking very Phantom of the Bohemia Rhapsody. <laughs> Malik's a fantastic actor. I'm very curious to see what he does with this character. Christoph Waltz is back as expected from the continuation of Spectre as Blofeld. I've been asked this several times. Do I need to see Spectre before watching No Time to Die? And the answer is yes. I highly recommend it. I know it has mixed reviews. I'll be the first to say it's not the best Bond film, but it's probably better than 99% of the stuff out there on Netflix. And I could tell already from this trailer, there's gonna be some big holes in the plot for you if you haven't seen Spectre. Leia Sadu is also back as Bond's love interest, Madeline Swan. Her role in Spectre was complex and I thought she did an exceptional job. At first, she's not at all attracted to Bond, and part of the reason was because her father was an assassin. She didn't like that world, and Bond's lifestyle was not something that she wanted in her life because he's an assassin of sorts as well. So we're not going to get into spoilers here, but from the trailer, we know they eventually get together, and those of you who saw Spectre know how that came to pass. New to the franchise is Lashana Lynch, who plays Nomi, a double O agent, not 007 is speculated. In an interview with Entertainment Weekly, this is how Lynch describes her character in the film. I play Nomi, who is a 00 agent. She's a 00 agent who some would say is trying to prove herself, but for her, she's already been putting in the work for a long time. She's someone who, if you would ask her, what her skills are, or she has any skills that she doesn't know, she'd just pretend and say she knows everything, and then maybe go away for two hours and hone in on the skill and pretend she had it all along. Yeah. Um, She's got a lot of front. A lot of front. Yeah. A lot. Yeah. It's, it's not a bravado, but she has a confidence that is um, maybe uncomfortable for some, and slightly awkward. She says some things at times when she probably shouldn't. You know, no. group setting. No. <laughs> really? Yes. Some similarities here, yeah, right? Similarities. Aren't there? Right? <laughs> However, she does. She, she's someone who plays by the book a lot. She's like almost like a teacher's pet to a fault. Um, so when she comes across people who have been doing what like she's doing. Like sort of Miss Clipboard and Whistle. Yeah, and loves being pat on the back for it. Loves to say, oh, you got it right? Yes, I'm the example. Fantastic, thank you. Um, so when she comes across people like Bond, who just know what to do because they're experienced, she feels uncomfortable with that because that's not the way you should do it. Right. That's not the way M said to do it, so why would you do it in your right. own way? And he likes breaking the rules. Lashana Lynch is getting a lot of negative backlash because of this role, and that's unfortunate because in real life, she seems like an extremely charming person, and she's certainly talented. I hate to see an actor in that type of position when it's not something they cost. She's just doing her job. Okay, let's quickly get into the female Bond controversy that the internet is up in arms about, that the next James Bond, 007, is going to be a woman. In an interview with Variety magazine, Barbara Broccoli, who inherited the Bond saga with her half-brother, Michael G. Wilson, in the 90s, shared her thoughts on what the next Bond could look like. And while she's open to some diversification, the female Bond is where she draws the line. What I think is this whole thing got blown out of proportion. This is not the first time there was another 00 agent in a Bond movie. Sean Bean was 006 in GoldenEye, and he was simply a part of the storyline, and I think that's the case in this movie as well. This is not a passing of the torch to Lynch. Bond will continue being Bond as long as they're selling tickets. We've seen Bond change over the years. I mean, Sean Connery's Bond from 1962 is certainly not the same Bond that Daniel Craig is playing in recent times. I think both the producers and the fans understand what Bond is, for better or for worse. I personally think that if there comes a day that the character changes too much, that'll be the day we lose the audience because then it won't be Bond anymore. There are certain things fans want to see when they go to a Bond flick. The future of this franchise is going to fall heavy on whoever gets the next role of James Bond. But hey, look, when Daniel Craig took over the role, 
There's a lot of people who didn't think he was going to be a good fit. And now he's a fan favorite. As a matter of fact, most of the people I talk to, he is the best Bond. Another female newcomer to the series, and one that is certainly on the up and up, is Ana de Armas. She's coming off a breakout role in Knives Out, which is another movie she worked on with Daniel Craig. This was a great murder mystery movie, and the two of them had fantastic chemistry. I expect to see the same type of sparks fly in No Time to Die. She keeps lining up these kind of movies, and she's going to be a real big star in no time. Other actors returning are Ralph Fiennes as M, Jeffrey Wright as Felix Leader, Ben Whishaw as Q, and Naomi Harris as Money Penny. So many of the familiar characters we have grown accustomed to are returning. Like I said before, this is an all-star cast. Kerry Fukunaga directed this film. I really enjoy his work. I like how he's following suit with many directors in Hollywood that are using more practical effects. It brings a whole layer of realism to the movie. So we get scenes like this and not like this. I love the fact that some of this movie was shot on actual 35 and 65 millimeter film. And you can tell, you get that very soft, mystical, magical look that is hard to replicate with digital cameras. In the trailer, we see a release date of April 2020. Obviously, that's coming on. It's been pushed back. According to the official website, if everything stays on track, it will be released in November 2020 into theaters. There's so many great things happening with this trailer. I give the trailer for No Time to Die our highest rating, 5 out of 5 on our star scale. I have one more question for you, the viewer, and I think you know what it is. Who's going to be the next James Bond? Let me know in the comments below. Hit the subscribe button for up and coming reviews related to Bond and other movies. And for now, that's our take. We'll see you next time.